Hello, hello everyone. Today, short tutorial about how to screen, skin your trails or add a skin to any line, uh, line strip to be specific. Um, if you're lazy to follow this tutorial, you can find um, this post with this file um, for free on my Patreon. Uh, you just have to be a subs not subscriber but follow my content, you don't need to, to pay to have access to this project. Um, it runs on the 20, 25-31740, but <coughs> you can also, I think this technique can be applied on experimental maybe, but surely works on the official um, release. Um, anyway, I'm gonna start from, from scratch. Um, the first thing I want to do is to create a point generator. Um, we don't need point primitives or normals. We just need the position of the point. And let's create 10 points. Just after this, I will connect a noise. Um, we see in the point generator that the seed is one, so let's have a decent, different seed in the noise. I like the random um, generated noise um, operators, sorry, to have a different seed um, to avoid um, chaotic behaviors. Um, I'm gonna make this point move by adding a speed chop like this. Here I'm gonna press plus, select the noise, and we're gonna use the information to translate the noise on the fourth dimension. And here, select speed. Point one. So we see that the point starts moving. I would like them to move faster, so I'm going to increase the amplitude of the noise, like this. To visualize better what we're doing, I'm going to create a null at the end of the network. And here, select display. Or just select the operator, and thanks to your keyboard, press the D key. We're going to split the screen in two, and here, select the geometry viewer. So here we see what we selected here. We can see this, we can see this. Anyway, we want to observe this. Um, I'm going to add a trail pop in order to have lines following the movement of the points. Like this. Perfect. So what I want to do is to have these shapes. So these shapes are built thanks to circles that follows the movement of the lines and after I skin the circles. So what if we skin now everything? It's absolutely not what we want. I'm gonna bypass the skin because we need to process a little bit data in order to skin correctly. So I'm gonna use a circle and I'm gonna copy circles along the trails. We see that here the trail creates 62, um, let's say, vertices in each line strip. Um, we're gonna connect the circle to the copy, like this. So we say that we copy one circle on each point of this geometry. The circle seems super big, so Let's put point one and let's connect it. Okay, so we see that we have circles. The thing is that the circles, if I pause the project, are, I mean, the, the, the wall shape is flat because the circles are orientated in the XY plane. So the, the circles are, all have the same rotation. So here, for example, it's a bit weird. We don't have um, this kind of tube, let's say. Here it's working a little bit more, but not completely. Um, in order to do this, we will use um, an interesting node called line matrix. Uh, line matrix here. Perfect. Line matrix can give us a lot of information about how the points are built 
um, along the lines. We're gonna use um, the attribute displacement to previous this prev. So we're gonna enable it, and here by middle click the mouse button, we see that this prev is a float three direction. So I'm gonna visualize this in the DM attribute up like this. So we saw that it's a float three direction, so it's a, it's a vector. So here we're gonna right click vector this prev. And we see that for each point, it gives us the direction um, compared to the previous point. So at the end, it gives us the, um, let's say, the curvature of the line. It's not completely true, but it gives us how the, um, the shape of the line is. So what I want now is to rotate all these circles according to this attribute this prev. So we're gonna go to template in the copy and here we're gonna rotate the circles to the vector this prev. Let's stop displaying this and let's display this. So now we have the circles. When there is the when you comp your geometry viewer automatically always adapts um, the like this the I don't know the ratio of viewing the, the viewer you can disable it by going here and, and select adaptive homing or press the the Q um, key on your keyboard. So now it's working way 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 better. Let's try to skin again. It seems a bit better but still the skin seem to skin all the primitives, so it connects all the different circles. It's not what I want. Let's see how it behaves with only one. Cool. When I have only one line strip, the skin gonna skin all the different circles together. It's exactly what we want. Um, I don't really like the, the shade. It's, it doesn't seem super good. I'm gonna add, um, I'm gonna calculate again the normal here. Okay, way better. Um, okay, so it looks good, but I don't want to have only one tube, let's say. Let's see with two. Here, the trail creates um, a certain amount of point on each line. This amount of point is variable function to the trail length. So if we put find 5, we went to 62 to 32. Point 0.1, okay. So I want to, let's say, fix, um, to make this number of points per line constant. To do this, I will lose the line resample here. And I'm gonna say that I want a constant number of divisions per line strip. So here there is four. Okay. So we see that we have <coughs> um, four different divisions per line strip. In the skin we can say that I want to skin groups of n primitives. And when we change the the number here it behaves completely differently. So let's try, let's try if we can find a way of it working. So two, no, one, no, two is the minimum, three, four, no, five seems interesting, six, no. So five, here we have four, if we say 10, not working. So let's try again to find 10, 11. So we see that this parameter must be the number of divisions, so let's take drag and drop divisions on the skin and here release by selecting reference and here at the beginning in the expression let's one plus so we now have a correct skin adapted to the number of divisions we have in our geometry if you select 30 it's way smoother than 
3, for example. And the skin um, is adapted to this number of divisions. Um, instead of having circles, like complete tubes, we can have triangle, like this. We can have squares, etc. Okay, let's say 20. Line with sample is at 30. Perfect. At this moment, you can save your project in case there is a crash or anything. So yeah, but I want the skin to be little at the caps, let's say, at the beginning and at the end of the, of the lens strip. To do this, um, we're gonna stop watching this, we're gonna go back to the line matrix. We are still looking at the vectors, so vectors off. What I want to do is have an attribute that I will call here point scale that goes from zero to here in a gradient way, let's say one here to go back to zero here, to have this shape. If we take this, 0, 0 0.25, 0 0.5, 1, and then go back to 0. I want this attribute. The line matrix can give us a formation about um, distance in the line strip. <coughs> Sorry. So we can visualize these two attributes, distance from start normalized and distance from end normalized. So here we're gonna right click first, sorry, middle click here and see that this end norm and this start norm are floats. So it's not vectors, it's just, uh, let's say normal numbers. Um, so let's check distance and normalized. So we see that <coughs> the end is here because it's the back of the trail and the attribute distance and norm is zero because comparing to the end, the distance from this point to the end is zero and this, the distance from this one to the end is one. One because it's normalized. If we choose these operators, it could be different. Anyway, um, so we have a normalized data about where are the points in the line sweep. And we have also distance start normalized, and it's the opposite. So let's try to observe what we have here, but in a um, graphic way, let's say. I'm gonna connect this to chop, like this, up to chop. It's not optimized, we're not gonna use the data here, but it's just to understand a bit better what we're gonna do. So I select P, I select dist and norm, and dist start norm. P, I'm not interested, so just these two parameters. Let's have only one line. Here we select only one point. Okay, perfect. So we see that here we have the 0 to 1 values of dist and norm and dist start norm according to where we are in the line. I want a shape doing 0, 1, 0. So, like, uh, I want something like this. I'm gonna use the best software ever. I want something like this. With the scale 0 here and 1 here. Okay? So, I'm gonna multiply these, these, two, part, these two attributes. Combine channels multiply. We have exactly the shape we want. The only thing is that the maximum value here is 0 0.25 because in the middle here we do 0 0.5 multiplied by 0 0.5. The result is 0 0.25. So after that we want something that goes from 0 to 1. But here we have something going from 0 to 0 0.25. Perfect. So these operations here, we're gonna do them 
directly on the line matrix here. Okay, let's do this and let's visualize this again. Here I'm going to use a mass combine and say first operation multiply this end norm and this start norm A times B, this start norm, this end norm, and we want to set up the scale. Okay. We can visualize this, I'm sorry, but we can go here and here visualize what we call point scale. Perfect. But we see that we have a very low value in the middle. The caps um, ending points, let's say, are at zero. It's what we want, but here we have 0 0.25. So in the post, we select point scale and exactly the way we did in the math here, like this, from range for 0 to 0.25 to 0 to 1. So, and now we have a 0 to 1 point scale attribute. Perfect. We can delete this, it was just to visualize a bit the data. Stop displaying this, let's display again this. Okay. So now we have a point scale attribute. So in the copy, we're going to enable the point scale. Good. Perfect. Let's increase a little bit the scale length. To have something more homogene, let's say. Maybe you can reduce a bit the, the radius. OK. It looks interesting, but there is this weird color here. I don't know why. Let's add more um, points. All of them has these ending caps in a weird way. This twist here is normal because it's um, the noise is moving the points sometimes super fast. Um, maybe we can increase the number of divisions. Anyway, I want to get rid of these caps here. So there is two things. Um, oh, it's a problem of color, but here we don't have color attribute. But also the normal and the, the color and the shading, let's say, um, depends on the normals. So let's observe the normals here. Vector normals. And we see that at the end and end, there is no normals. There is absolutely no normals. Let's reduce the number of divisions. Yeah, there is normals here, there is normals here, 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 but at the end there is no. And it's because the scale goes from 0 to 1. And if it's 0, there is no normal processing. I'm not completely sure about what I'm saying, but it's what I found out. So if here we add a little, little value, ah, we have things appearing. First, we have more geometry. We don't have these closed um, broken caps and also we have a good shading so perfect okay we can increase again the number of divisions in the in here and we have something working perfectly good et voilà <laughs> i hope you enjoy this um, short tutorial there is a lot of things to do with this kind of um, um, project. There is a lot, lot, lot of, of things. You can do a lot of things. Anyway, um, I have to go. And this tutorial will be um, super useful for... Um, a tutorial we'll post maybe in a few days concerning the pop freeze solver. Um, we're gonna use this technique, so this tutorial here, here will be um, like a reference tutorial. Anyway, don't hesitate to um, write a comment or anything if you have any question. Um, I will try, I will do my best to, to help you. And yeah, have fun and see you soon. Bye bye.